Hey there, in this tutorial, I'll be looking at how Bonner Boy's hit single Last Last was put together using FL Studio. If you're new, you know what to do, hit the subscribe button down below and let's get started. So, the song by Bonner Boy, Last Last, produced by Chopsticks, was actually sampled from Tony Braxton's song He Wasn't Man Enough. And the intro or the beginning of the song had this sample. Let me play it so you hear. Burner Boy and Chopsticks did play around with the sample. It was the same tempo, but all they did was just change the pitch and did a little bit of chopping. And this is how it sounded. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the original sample was in B minor, while the song by Burner Boy is in B flat minor. It was just transposed by, put by a semitone or by 100 cents if you're measuring with sense. So the song is the same tempo as the original, which is from Tony Braxton's song, He Wasn't Man Enough, all right? Still the same tempo with the change in the key. But when we look at the words being played in the original song, you can hear her calling the producer's name for the original song, Dark Child. So, or the producer tag for the original song, Dark Child, but it's not in Burner Boy's song. And that's where the chops came in, chopped by chopsticks. So when we play this, so this part right here, just a repetition from, let me make this longer. So you can see, so this part was just chopped in into bits and then it, was, it then it repeated. So you can have this, when I solo this, so this, this side sounds. So you can see that. So that's just how they got the samples to flow well into the other half. And then they repeated it again in the other half of the sample to take out where she also um said something else again so sometimes sampling can be really simple and straightforward like this sometimes it can be much more technical and detailed so it all depends on the vibe of the song and what your plans are with the sample you have at hand so these are one of the few times where you see a sample that was just used as it is or almost retaining the original character all right that wasn't over chopped over screwed over processed with effects now if you look at the drums the drums were heavily influenced by trap music because he made use of the 808 kick and the hi-hats typically here in trap music and this is how it sounds like so this is just the kick right this is a snare layered with a rim okay then this is a hat. If you open the hi hats, now it looks really just like a simple hi hat row, but in the original song, they actually play with the pitch. Between you click this fine pitch, you can see you can bring this pitch down. So this was what happened in the original song. And then this one just stays the regular notes that you hear. And then right here, we have just a regular hi hat running through, running through. And then here we have a open hat. Really simple drum pattern, but mostly influenced by trap or hip hop music. So the next part, which is this 808. Now for the 808, I used um, the Spins 808. It's very popular. You can easily find out Google or use YouTube. Just search for it, Spins 808. So this is how it sounds. So now I follow the chord progression, okay? I make sure I follow the chord progression so that the 808s can be really nice. Then this is how the chords are. Now, you know, when you hear the beat, you think that this is all to it because this is the most prominent part that everybody has, but there are still some more layers that we're going to look at in this production. When we get into the hook section, there are a couple of new elements in. We can see the horns, we can see some pads, and we can see some ambient melody. So let's take them one by one, all right? So let's hear the horns and see how the horns sound. <laughs> so the horns were played with um cork treats extreme and this is the presets i use the ff brass section you can find it in the brass um section right here or you can just search write the name in here and this is how it sounds like
And then there's a bit of variation in the other half of the song, guys, in the second verse especially. So let's hear that part and see. So in your productions, you can make little variations along the way using the same elements you used in your beat. You don't have to introduce new, new sounds to play different things. You can see the same sound and play slightly different melody. You can see the change is really subtle. It's not an obvious change. So the next element that is obvious in the hook section is pads. And it's common to find pads in most choruses of songs because pads typically carry the energy, right? It gives you that feeling of this is epic. This is hyper. Something interesting is happening here. And this is how it sounds. And it just follows the chord progression exactly. And it was played with cork treating. The most of these beats, I use cork treating almost all through. It's one of my favorite VSTs for making beats, not just Afrobeat, but beats in general. So I use the warm part precise. I didn't do any um, tweaking here. I really don't need tweaking in it. I don't really have that time to do much tweaking. And it's also linked into the mixer. When I open up the mixer, I have an EQ cut taking away some of the high end to make it a bit more dull because it was really bright without the EQ cuts and in the song one of the reasons why maybe the brass didn't sound so bright was because of the mood of the song the sample was already so bright so the way you shape your frequencies can make some elements fit better into a song so if maybe the brass were brighter it may have a hard time shining through the mix or rather being audible in the mix with the already bright um, guitar or the bright nylon I think it's a nylon guitar playing in the sample so it may be a bit difficult to hear based on the frequency will be clashing so dulling the frequency sometimes can help you have more clarity in your mix you don't always have to have the brightest but the most popping sound in, in your production sometimes you, most of your sounds can be dull and have just one bright or one or two or very few bright elements in the mix to really stand out so when we play together it's how it sounds And then here we have an ambient melody as well. It was played using Citrus. This was the only non cog treating extreme VST I used for making this beat. Um, and the preset I used was the Fantasy Harp Acoustic Guitar, right? You can just come right here, come into this special preset right here where it says Plucked. You can see Fantasy Harp. So this is how it sounds on its own. But it has some processing running through, but let's take a look at the notes first. So here the notes are really simple. It's just different octaves. It's the same notes, this and this, but taking down on different octave. Now let's take a look at what is running through it. So I have a bit of compression running through. It's not really active. I just used the gain to increase the loudness because it was a very quiet sound. Then I did lots of reverb to just give it that ambience feel because this was the closest sound I could find to the original um, in the in the song. Okay. So let me turn on the effects. You hear a sound. Then with the effects on. So that was pretty much it for that sound. So when we hear it all together, this size sounds. So in the second verse, there's a little ear candy that goes on that may, that may go unnoticed to many people. There is a brass layer. And this is how it sounds on its own. It was played using cork treating extreme. And this was the preset I used, Bass Hits Plus. You can just type the name in if you have cork treating in the search bar. All right, so in the last part of the hook, towards the end of the song, there's this string that comes in. And then there's, it also changes again to a higher pitch. So 
so let me slowly tell you here what's going on there. And then the high pitch. All right, so the arrangement for this song is really simple. We just have two verses, two hooks, an intro and an outro, okay? So the first verse is quite short, just about um, eight bars. And we have something like a pre-hook, then which builds up into the main hook or chorus of the song. Then we have a longer second verse, right? And then we have something like a bridge that comes in in the song. We have the pre-hook and then we have the hook. Pardon me, that was supposed to be the hook repeats in there again. And then lasted for just eight bars again. Then we have an outro right here. So I think one of the most interesting things about the arrangement of this song was how they layered sound and how they did very simple things to make it stand out. For example, in this, when you take a look at the sound, if this is the original song, the sample sounded bright from the beginning. That is the Tony Braxton sample. Then in the verses, or some parts of the verses, it sounded dull, like they did some high cuts in there. That's why this automation clip for the sound, right? I just did a high cut of around um, about 4.5, 4.6 kilohertz, right? Let me make a unique side here. You can see that transition, right? So that just gives a different mood, gives a different vibe. Something as simple as that can give your sound or arrangement a different vibe. And another thing again to know is that it's typical to find drum rolls in Afrobeat, but this song has no drum rolls. What you typically find is silence. And then right here again. And then here again. So if you find this tutorial helpful, don't forget to leave me with a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to keep up with more tips and tricks. I'm Mr. Classy. See you soon. Cheers.